This is a shock podcast. Shock. This is Shock Life Confession Podcast with me, Reza Abraham. Today's guest is a Malaysian singer, songwriter, and fashion icon. She has produced over seven local and international award-winning albums. Her soulful, feminine, pop, and R&B songs has been an inspiration to millions of people all around the world. Darling of Malaysia, music industry, and pride of the nation, Yuna. Thank you for being with us, Yuna. Hi, thank you for having me. It's awesome. Thank you for spending time with us. So I know it's the Raya time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we just want to go through some of the things that we found. I know that you are releasing a new album yeah. very soon. So you're born and uh, raised in Kedah. How did you first get interested in music? And when did you decide to pursue it as a career? Well, I was born in El Ustakada, but I grew up in a lot of different places. Like throughout my childhood, uh, my parents and I, we moved around a lot. So we were in Penang, we were in Subang Jaya Slango, you know, we were in Perlis at one point. Um, so I don't know, I just kind of like got used to traveling and also making friends from different areas, you know, sure. like the city friends. And then there's like the kampung friends and I love them all, you know, so much. And I think that was how I got exposed to a lot of different types of music. And uh, my dad, too, is a musician, music enthusiast. He's not like a professional musician, but he wants to be, you know. But he loves it. He still plays music till today. So that's pretty much like how I got into music, into singing. But writing songs, I think that happened when I started my university years mm. in Kedah. Ah, I see, I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So can we, can we conclude that your uh, singing voice is genetic or was it something like... Uh. You discovered it in yourself. I don't know. I'd like to think that I discovered it myself because for the longest time when I was young, uh, when I was singing other people's songs, I try my best to imitate their Mm. singing voice. Like, for example, if I was singing a Christina Aguilera song, I try my best to like copy her voice. But I didn't understand at the time because I was young, right? I didn't understand that I would have to find my own identity as a singer my own voice and it was really hard to do so I couldn't really formulate like okay how do I do this right it only happened when I started writing my own songs that was when I had no one else to copy Mm -hmm. you know like oh like I wrote something original so now I'm just singing singing my own song and then that was how I started recording myself listening to myself you know sing in the recording and just like oh so yeah this is my singing voice now and then from there you know I kind of just like find different ways to like make it sound better at least to me you know so but also natural Mm. so yeah I guess you could say it's like 50% (laughs) genetics you know just give credit to my dad okay okay, we will do that (laughs) so as someone who has been in this industry for a very very long time right yeah. what would be the recipe to create the next truly successful singer in the world right so if you want to like oh. break them down in terms of voice uh, look talent style so what, what what is that mix up would be like if you want to prioritize it wow that's a great question I mean personally I don't know like about uh, I, I don't know what other people think you know like in the industry what their standards are like Mm. but for me as an artist you know you have to really want this that's the secret recipe of success and trying to be a successful musician you really have to really want it you know like you breathe you eat you wake up you drink music you know like the desire and the hunger is it yes so and it's all you think about like music okay like constantly practicing getting better at uh, writing and singing and um, collaborating with other artists I think you know yeah you gotta have the the what do you call it the courage to really do the work you know mm. what I mean like work hard and um, believe in yourself but also the 
originality like that is where i feel like a lot of artists like you, you see a lot of successful artists out there like um they have lots of fans but sometimes you kind of like you you would notice it like oh they kind of sound the same you know yeah. what i mean yeah. like all the vocals just like female artists they all are on the radio but they all sound the same you know sure. but someone like Adele shines and you know that's Adele because you know her voice yep. you know so originality authenticity that is also another secret recipe I think of like making the number one artist I mm. feel you know and um, also uh, the, the other stuff um, the support from like a music label management manage- management is the number one thing I feel like I, I also meet a lot of artists who are so talented so special but just couldn't break through yes. you know and it's always the management that's like falling apart you know sure. and um so yeah, management you're referring to like having someone to support you bring you yeah. like out and promote the job yeah. that you do right yes exactly like you know just just a support system if you don't have that support system for example if you are hanging out with like the wrong kind of people mm. you know how it's this goes for like any other profession i feel you sure. know to be successful you have to kind of surround yourself with positive people who also you know want to grow with you if you don't have that it's going to be difficult you, you can't do this by yourself I think so a lot of successful artists that I see a lot of them you know they they grew up with the people that they work with like for example Tyler the creator I worked mm. with him and he came from a very like supportive like family and friends you know he has that system based in Los Angeles that's already you know there for him that's why he's yep. him and he can be original and he has his supporters you know and um, he's confident in his in his craft so um, yeah I think that's that's what I think that, nice you know, so if I takes. if I want to summarize it basically it all start with the person who has the desire and the hunger to do it mm-hmm. and then the both elements of courage and confidence comes in Yes. So courage basically is like getting out of your comfort zone and confidence yes. comes from your craft is from the competency that yeah. you have right mm-hmm. the skill set and have making sure that you have the right network around you that they are for you and yeah. willing to support you there so you do both singing and also songwriting mm-hmm. right so which one satisfy you the most uh, I think songwriting why is <laughs> that thing. I mean I love I enjoy performing as well but there's nothing like creating something out of nothing you know mm. like that first few hours of just making the song like the first part of the song I think it's very special that's something that I live for you know that I feel like yeah even when I'm like 60 65 inshallah you know like I <laughs> I that would be something that I still want to do like even even if I'm not doing music I'd still be in the kitchen or something with my ukulele just trying yeah. to write something um but yeah, I think songwriting is something that I really enjoy. I'm a very private person. It takes a lot for me to be in public, you know, like it takes a lot for me to be out there with the fans and I have to kind of just prepare myself when I have to do that. So like performing, it takes a lot out of me. Like when I'm performing, I give my soul to mm. the fans like for one hour or one hour and a half and I am theirs, you know, sure. and then after that, it's done. You know, unless I have like like meeting greets and stuff like that I still give like whatever I have in my soul <laughs> and I give it to them because I love them but I'm that kind of person when I'm when when it's done I just want to be with you know like the people that I love and be by myself and nice. just kind of rest you know and um, be with my own thoughts you know so you know I'm not I'm not a songwriter but I wrote wrote a book before normally as the authors they usually write it to someone so they have like that person in the mind when they when they're writing something so mm-hmm. i was writing always to the younger version of myself so when you write a song usually you write it to who well um i guess you know when i write it's always like the theme is always like an unsent letter to my childhood to I don't know my parents maybe when I was younger you know why didn't you understand me you know so <laughs> it's always like something kind of kind of silly but also kind of you know it's it's real like it has to come from like a real feeling that that you know like in order to write something that's why it's different when you listen to uh, like a generic pop song that's mm. written by pop songwriters like hit makers right yep. like okay you hire five songwriters 
who wrote big songs like for example like okay like this writer wrote on Beyonce Bruno Mars and um, all these other like big artists like uh, Ariana, Ariana Grande and then okay now this person works with me and then you kind of just like you can kind of catch it like oh this is someone else wrote this for her you know but what I value most with my songwriting I would like it to be either 65% my words mm. you know and then it's believable and then whatever song that I put out it's mine like it's uh, honest it's sincere because I would have to live with this song forever you know so yeah I think um, oh, wow I forgot what the question was, yes. <laughs> was no no I, I think you answered you answer pre- <laughs> pretty well so basically it's the unsent letters to yourself yeah so, uh-huh. so you are also writing to yourself and also it depends on the theme and where at which yeah. point you are in your life so yeah. how do you know when a song is going to be big like do you have like some form of parameter there that say like mm. uh-huh this is going to be a huge one you know what when I was writing Crush mm. I kind of felt it uh-huh. but it was such a slow song um, a lot of people on my side like um, the label side the management side they weren't 100% sold on the song mm. they thought I really needed an upbeat pop song but for me Crush was something special because it was sweet and sincere and honest you know mm. and when we thought of like having Usher in one of the records one of the songs they wanted this other upbeat song that was also on the album at the time Chapters in 2016 and I was like it just didn't feel <laughs> right it just didn't sit right with me like no like he has to be on this Crush song I'm telling you it's going to be it's going to be something special so back to your question like do I know if a song is going to be a hit you'll never know if a, mm. if a song is going to be a hit you just kind of like have to believe in the craft first believe in your instinct mm. um, with me I went with Crush like I told all of them all the bosses like no 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 we're going to do Crush with Usher and then we sent it over to Usher and he was excited about it and uh, he recorded his verse and it became like you know a hit like it wasn't like a huge hit but it was still yep it opened up a different audience for me you know and um, I'm forever grateful for that first and foremost like it's it's a special song yep. so that's why it's a hit you know so yeah that's what I try to find every time like when I'm in the song when I'm making when I'm making music yeah. so uh, has there been like any song that you composed and then you held on to it you were not not sure like this is going to be a big one and then after you release it then you realize like I, I should have done this like way uh, earlier yeah I do I do have a few songs that was kind of like that in, the, in that situation but it's always like this like oh man the moment has passed the oh. song is like it's three <laughs> years old I don't know I like to release songs when they're like fresh yes, and new yes. when I release something like from 2020 that I have in, in the music vault I mm. call it it feels different because I'm not there anymore you know like I'm I'm not in that situation anymore mm. Wh- wherever I was at the time I'm already out of that situation you know so whatever that you write at the time as a songwriter you are absorb. you're like a sponge you know you're absorbing all these like different influences that you see during that time you know like for example if I made a song during the pandemic it's like all these feelings that I'm feeling during the pandemic if I'm releasing it right now it's just like you know it, it doesn't hit the same way mm. like when you're alone in your apartment when you feel isolated from other people right like so yeah I feel like songs can be perishable like if you keep it for too long but once in a while, there will be that one song that's worth looking into. If you really believe in it, like it's special and it's still, what do you call it? It's like Marie Kondoing mm, songs, mm. you know? If this song <laughs> still gives you joy, yes. you're listening to it put it out you yes. know but yeah and it will resonate with some people mm-hmm. yeah so let's talk about some of the works that you have done one of the things that stand out for you is the number of collaborations that you have done I, I'm not sure whether you're familiar with this book by Ryan Holiday so mm-hmm. he said obstacle is the way and uh, the people who basically grow to become who they are right now it's often get there because of the obstacles that they have gone through yeah and there are some people on the other side who purposely go for certain tough jobs Mm -hmm. because they want to really polish their art Mm -hmm. and when I was looking at like the profile 
of you and all the collaborations with the big guys in the industry. What is Yuna's main reason to go for all this collaboration? What are you trying to achieve when you go for all these tough jobs? Because I, I believe it's tough not jobs. easy to work with these people. Um, it's, I don't know, for fun. <laughs> it is fun, you know, like it's fun to be able to work with another artist that you look up to, mm. you know, and uh, for me, if I find someone that I can connect with and they also feel like they can connect with me, it has to be like a mutual thing. Like mm -hmm. it doesn't work one way. Like, oh, you know, wants to work with this person and this person is like, okay, whatever, just pay me this amount of yeah, money yeah, yeah, and yeah, I'll yeah. give you the feature. I'm like, I, I don't want that. You know, like all the, I'm, I'm really lucky. Like all the artists that I worked with, um, collaborated with, they also wanted, genuinely wanted to work with me. Mm. Um, it wasn't like, us, you know, holding them down like, hey, you gotta work with me, here's money, you know, they all just basically are curious as well to like, oh, who's this Yuna girl? Like, okay, let's work with her. Um, and, um, but for me, yeah, like it's, you know, gaining experience, gaining knowledge um, and uh, learning different styles of, you know, how to work with them and also like getting to know them as well. You know, for example, like working with Tyler, everybody knows like, oh, Tyler's, you know, like how's working with him? It's probably like really hard to work with him. He's crazy. I'm like, yeah, he's crazy, but he's so good, you know, mm. like and I would have like some moments with him and we talk about like his family, you know, and he would share like about his his siblings and that's what I like about a collaboration. And that's how I feel like, oh, he's human. And I see that humanity in him. Mm. I want to work with this person, okay. you know? So, yeah, I guess like it's a having that special connection with the people that I work with teaches me something as well as an artist and also as a human being. So Great. So uh, one of the songs that I personally, when I first listened to it, uh, was Panton 171330. Yeah. So that was really, really a song that about believing yourself and uh, accepting who you are as a person so what was the core inspiration behind that song which is a lot of people I believe they resonate with it well it's basically you know it's like um, it's about self-confidence self-appreciation I think like um, I just like one day randomly went through like this um, Pantone like color coded like yep. swatches you know and then what's cool about this book like it shows like the code and also like oh this is the color of whatever for example like almond you know so mm. there's a photo of an almond and so I don't know I was just like going through um, these pages it's just like oh that's kind of cool if I could like and trying to find like a, a tone that matches my skin at the time sure. we were spending my husband and I we were spending a lot of time at the beach and then um, being under the sun and I was a little bit tan and I was like oh I'm kind of tan okay let's see you know <laughs> like what color matches my skin tone so that was like the inspiration um, to the song yeah it's basically a love song kind of just like talking about how you know I found someone who accepts me the way I am like I mean not just my skin tone but you know everything about me you know I'm not like a simple I'm com complex being you know mm. so um, and I found someone who accepts me uh, the way I am you know so yeah so that's what Pantone 17 13 30 is all about it's a long title but I love it <laughs> no it's really nice it's really nice yeah yeah it has that message of simplicity there yeah and also like just uh, love who you are as a person because mm -hmm. everything is start with the self-love yeah. so um, now let's go a bit forward so March 2020 you came to Malaysia for a very short work trip mm -hmm. and then suddenly it becomes like you know one and a half year of what we call it like stuck here oh my gosh yes <laughs> everyone else uh but being here it seems like it has a big impact on you mm -hmm. and your work as well mm -hmm. meaning that uh you kind of started to understand yourself and there was like some bad incidents that happened to you so you lost three of your loved one so that brings us basically to the new album that you're putting out right so it's been about almost like two decades since you first released your a full malay album uh album almost two decades <laughs> yeah i think almost almost there right so <laughs> okay like when was 15 years maybe? okay 15 okay, years 15 <laughs> years 15 years <laughs> so <laughs> so what led you to produce that album and uh, if you don't mind share with us like you know the the inspiration behind it and uh, why is it so special so for this um 
Well, it's an EP, um, the Malay EP. I guess like I just wanted to express myself differently. Like I've produced, I mean, like I've I've put out five US album, and within these ten years, I've only like released a few Malay songs, you mm. know, and they've done really really well. They they've become super successful. Like for example, through Kedi Bintang and Pulang. For me, like this year was the year. Like, if I wanted to do anything with uh, Malay music, this is my opportunity because I was um, already independent, you know. So I'm no longer signed to a major label, and I'm kind of like free to do. I'm a free agent. I can do whatever I want. Sure. So it's fun. There's a sense of freedom in creating, right? And um, I was excited to um, see what songs I can put out. And to be honest with you, I was very nervous about it too mm. because I haven't done anything like this in so long. I was actually calling up all my like Malaysian artist friends <laughs> just like, hey, like I don't know what I'm doing. Can you help me? Or like producers like, hey, so if I want to do something, can I like reach out to you? But at the end of the day, it was just me on my own writing these songs and I started with one song which was Menanti mm. and then the next day I wrote another song and then I just kind of like got into it you know like I was in it I got into the groove and the momentum and it kept going so I wrote like five I, I think five songs but I'm only putting out four songs for this EP and saving the rest for another release you know so Yeah, I was really happy that I was able to do so. Um, but also, you know, finding inspiration from what I've gone through during the pandemic. Like, as you said, you know, like I didn't plan to kind of like nobody, nobody planned to stop their yep. life like on March 2020, you know. And um, for me, it felt like... <gasps> Wow, I get to rest, I get to be with myself. This is great, but at the same time, you know, of course, like really experiencing life and loss and love and having all of that cooped up because creatively I wasn't in a space like in LA, I would be, you know, I have access to producers and someone to help me create music. In Malaysia, I, I also have those people around me, but it's just not the same, you know, so all the creative All the songs are just like locked in in this like heart, right? So when I went back to LA, it just sort of like exploded, you know. Yeah. So I have so much to give. So that was also how I felt about writing this Malay EP. It's just like wow, I I actually have a lot in me that I needed to express, and um, and talk about. Um, so yeah. Sure. So are there any local artists that maybe a lot of people don't know them, mm -hmm. uh, but they're doing a fantastic job? Right. Is there anyone that you can name? Wow. I have to say, like, all the the um, newer hip-hop guys, they're doing really well, you know? Like, they, they produce their own music. It's amazing how they found their identity. Like, for example, um, there's this rapper, his name is Kuai, and mm -hmm. I just, like, randomly found him during the pandemic. And he's just so good. Like, everything he does is just so natural. I think that's, like, the most um, um, difficult thing Thing to do when you're trying to be a singer sounding natural on a record right that is the thing that's gonna like put you on another level like you're not trying to like be someone you're not trying to be something and it comes off like um you're trying too hard you know but a lot of these like young rappers like they're so natural in just the way they say things and the way they sing the way they make their production too is just like chill and cool you know so yeah i think like there are a lot of like um younger artists uh, in malaysia these days that's um really talented like midnight music like it's also like another band that i really like yeah as far as i know uh, you are considered the most successful malaysian singers locally and internationally we can we can say that um so if somebody wants to collaborate with yuna what is your criteria to choose <laughs> who to collaborate with Wow, you'll just never know with me. I'm a wild card, you know, the Uno wild card. Um, I think uh, that thing that I was saying, like the the, the natural talent, like I really okay. I really like that about an artist. And then the second criteria that comes close to it is whether this person is professional. Like, yeah, mm. you can have natural talent, but are you professional? You know, so that is also number number two, really important. Because if you're trying to have a song with me, like we have to kind of be on the same page. Like we have to be serious. I work really hard, you know, like I'm a 
almost a workaholic and I care about the songs that I put out like everything I put out is not like um, what do you call it something that is um, like a no-brainer everything I put out is 100% effort for me you know mm. and the person that I work with have to have the same attitude towards the song that we're making to get together and uh, yeah I don't know that sense of respect as well like I don't like to say for example if I'm working with someone younger I don't use my seniority card you know mm, nice but don't take advantage of yep. me not doing that when it comes to working with someone younger I want this person to also listen to me you know because I have so much to give I have so much to share yeah, I think that's it. That's good. Yeah. So today that, <laughs> today that we are recording this podcast is 26 April. Yeah. Back in 2016, 26 April, you have released your crush videos. Really? Yeah, that's exactly the date. It's, what? 2016. <laughs> okay, that's like... Yeah, we, we, do, we do our assignment. What? That's amazing, guys. Thank you so much. Now I have to post this. Yes. Um, so uh, seven years yes yeah. that's true that's true wow so for, because of that reminder so I want to ask you for something is there anything that uh, you can share with your fan that mm -hmm. you have never spoken about it with anyone today fun, fun fact about crush yeah okay <laughs> uh, let's see something you never spoke about it before oh gosh okay well I never really told this to anyone, I think, but crush almost didn't happen. I had to meet Usher face to face and convince him why he should do this song with me. I think he loved the song and he loved working with me. He loved the song is already done. Like it was finished. It was how how you hear it today. Mm. Like it was done. But something stopped him. I don't know if it was his management or, you know, label saying, hey, well, this is not a good idea. Like, it comes back to the fact that me being a Muslim Asian woman, you know, and um, it was kind of like for him, he didn't, he didn't see that. Like, he was just like, oh, Yuna is a great songwriter, great singer, great musician. I'm going to work with, with her. But I think, you know, a lot of other people kind of just like added these ideas. And he was just like, oh, maybe it's not a good idea. And I was like, oh, no, we have to make this happen. How do I, how do I convince him? Okay, let's go meet up with him. So I met up with him. We talked and I was there just like pitching this, this song. Like, yo, Usher, we have to do this. Like, it's crazy. Like, I am like probably the only hijabi r&b singer in the world who's doing this right now in america and you get to be a part of it you know we get to bring two worlds together like for example like a lot of um fans from from the from the muslim community mm. love your music like you know probably you have an idea probably you don't but it's crazy this is gonna be huge like if they see this so i had to kind of just do that and he was very sweet about it and he's like i'm just kind of nervous you know um <laughs> But okay, like let's do it, you know, let's 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 shock the world, you know. So yeah, and then we had crush and, and that happened and he still brings me out on his shows, you know, if he has like a, a concert, like a show, he would invite me to perform crush with him. So it's really special. Thanks to you for doing <laughs> you <know>? the work. <laughs> Thanks to me. <laughs> yes. So uh, your music uh, has been featured in a number of films and TV shows. Mm -hmm. So how, how does it feel to have your music to be a part of this cultural touchstone like films and TV shows? What impact do you hope your music have on the world. I just want people to enjoy my music and really feel like they're not alone because I grew up being very you know quiet and shy. I'm the only child, so I'm always by myself and I'm always like making something in in my bedroom, music or art, you know, and um it can get like pretty lonely, you know? Like I think music is like a gateway. Like I I make my music and then I try to reach out to people who are just like me, you know, mm. and um, and I just want people to be seen. Um, if anybody listening to my music, they feel seen, that's already a success to me. Like it could just be one person. And I always tell this to young musicians who feel like they need to have one million fans before they can like make music. To me, it's like, no, as long as what you create is real, just put it out right now. Let your cousins listen to it, your school friends listen to it. And if one person comes back to you and say like, you know what, I listened to this 
every day going to school that's wow. one person and it's like you're already a successful musician don't see it as like oh I have one million views two million views and it because it wasn't like that for me you know like um, the most special part of my music career in the beginning was when I shared my music with my housemates who went to university with me and they all just couldn't stop listening to it and they were like you know like you need to do something with these songs you know so that was the most I think like the the highlight of my entire music career was with my friends who were there and enjoying my music so mm-hmm. nice nice so as you know uh, Michelle Yeoh just won Oscar this was a very surprising information to me too I don't know whether you know or not there is a Malaysian actually who won a Grammy award mm-hmm. uh, as a songwriter yeah Annie Zonevel what needs to happen for Yuna to bring Malaysia a Grammy award as a singer oh. Oh, that's going to be tough. Grammy is not an easy thing to win. You have to create some sort of buzz around your work. um, And that requires a lot of like PR move, a lot of also, you know, promo behind your project. You are Yuna, you can do it. (laughs) (laughs) You can bring the world together. (laughs) For me, the music, I can probably, that's that's the best thing that I can do. Like a a Grammy level music, I can do that. Mm. But everything else that comes with it, that's going to be tough but never say never you know like um, I have a lot of friends uh, who got nominated for the Grammys and they're independent artists you know and um, it's also you know yeah yeah, you you have to create like some sort of a buzz around around your project and I try I I try a couple of times Crush almost got nominated you know so just like stuff like that it's like Grammys it's like you have to attend their events like you know you have to kind of just like be involved as much as you can with with their events gatherings you know and um, it's a lot of work but I, I try my best and hopefully one day you know I get to be up there too but with me it's you know if if it happens it happens if if not it's fine too I already am just so happy and content with what I have now like I cannot ask for anything more you know like it's not like oh it's not enough I want a Grammy now like it's like wow I've done a lot of really cool stuff in, yep. in my career like singing for movies like having a song on crudes and working with like legendary songwriters David Foster and all these things that maybe other people who have won a Grammy didn't get to do yeah Yeah, so it's different like our journeys are, are different you know so you just kind of have to embrace what you have in front of you and just appreciate that you know so sure yeah. mm-hmm. sure so to finish things off uh, we have this uh, game called final confessions oh ah. uh, yes so <laughs> I'm going to ask you a series of quick you know uh, five random questions and you must answer them as quickly as possible Ooh, okay so I'll not try. much of contemplations around it so let's go with the first one so which of your works are you most proud of album or song you can go with the song Okay. Uh, oh, it has to be Crush. Crush. Crush, yeah. So, what is the one song that you never get bored of? Forevermore. Okay. Yeah. So, which artist do you wish to collaborate with? Beyonce. <laughs> Easy. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you could switch voices with any other singer for a day, who would it be and why? Probably a guy. I would switch it with... This is so funny. Usher, maybe. <laughs> I'll switch it with Usher for a day. See how it's, see how it's like. <laughs> nice. So what is your dream stage that you wish you could sing on one day? Radio City Hall. That would be in New York. I think that's like the number one like venue that I want to perform at. <laughs> so what is your favorite local singer? You know what? I'm going to have to go with Datu Sheila Majid. She's, she just, she's just really special. She has a special tone. But yeah, I can't pick one. Ning Baizura also has like a, a very unique tone. Um, Dato Siti, of course, you know, she's achieved a, achieved a lot in her career. Um, sang a lot of really, you know, what do you call it? Like life-changing songs from all Malaysians, you know, so yeah. That's true. Mm-hmm. So what is your favorite international singer? 
I have to go with Snow Allegra. Uh, she's um she's a friend, and we kind of started our music career together. She's a natural talent. She sounds amazing, an amazing songwriter. You know, like I I'm really happy for her that she got her like big break because she started around the same time um, I did. So yeah, Snow Allegra. So if you could sing only one song for the rest of your life, what song would you choose? Uh, my song. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. my song. I think it would be Decorate. Mm. Yeah. Who has inspired your work the most? Frank Ocean. I think uh, he's an amazing songwriter, singer, songwriter, producer. Everything he puts out, it's like a movie. You know, like it's like you're watching like this beautiful film. So every time I put out my record, I always try to at least reach that level of artistry and make it into something that is you now. You know, so yeah. And the last question is, who do you wish to inspire with your work? It's really hard, like because I make when I make English music, that's that's who I am, you know. Yeah, the Malay Malay songs as well. That's who I am, but the English stuff, a lot of people from different parts of the world can resonate with it. I do want kind of like girls like me from you know the kampung in Malaysia. I want them to feel like they can be this too, like they can achieve this, like. I don't want to have like that gap between you know Yuna in the U.S., this Malay girl in the U.S., and like the Malaysian girl in like small town, um, small kampung. You know, like I am you, you are me. You know, like I I want them to be inspired by the music that I put out in in the U.S. as well. So I'm working on that. So yeah. Mm-hmm. So thank you, Yuna, for being with us. Thank you for having me. It's really me. an honor to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. So guys, uh, thank you so much for mm-hmm. tuning in. Catch you on next episode of the Shock Life Confessions podcast. Till then, take care.